having expectations at work is like fuel. Like that's yeah. good. I like I like that kind of uh, challenge for myself yeah. and for my team. I think it's valuable. Yeah. But when you go home, it's not supposed to be challenging. Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I put my gift of gab. Stupid word, gab is, huh? Any agreeers? Agree. Uh, I put my gift of gab to the test, and no topic is off limits. I'm your host, Trevor Everts, master baker, mythical soft boy, known globally for um, my resemblance to He-Man. A lot of people tell me I look exactly like He-Man. I don't know what it is. I mean, (laughs) you know, I don't see it. Uh, But they tell me, you know, physically... Uh, I just look a lot like he... I spoke with Nicole today. (laughs) Nicole that you know are familiar with, probably. Uh, Nicole Aniety, my boss slash coworker slash friend. Uh, We talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about our own personal relationships to food. We talked about Gucci Gucci by Crayshon. Uh, phenomenal song. Um, we talked about our relationships to coworkers and how our coworkers and our superiors are also our friends and, you know, navigating that. And uh, we gave you some great advice on dating and cooking and how to impress people with your cooking. Uh, and we had very different opinions. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a super fun time. We talked about my dad a little bit and I mm-hmm. wanted to tell, I didn't get the chance to tell the story, but I want to tell it now. So my dad told me a story this past weekend that he's never told me before somehow. And my dad loves to tell stories hmm. he, and he's, uh, you know, he likes to, he's a storyteller. He embellishes, he, you know, he said, so I was very surprised that there was a story from my dad that I hadn't heard, but apparently, um, so my dad used to work in technology. He started a technology company, oh, cool. um, but the technology that him and his friends developed was used uh, during, in the, in the early 2000s, the London, the London bombings, it was used by um, law enforcement uh, to, you know, investigate. Um, oh. So my dad did a lot of trips out to London during that time. And one of his friends, uh, his good friends in London that he did a lot of work with uh, was an MI6 agent. Um, That's actually really cool. Yeah. Well, no, it gets cooler. So this guy, my dad's super close and he's like a pretty high up. Apparently his family, um, like the Royal Guard, uh, is his family's been like members of the Royal Guard for like generations. So, I mean, this guy is like MI6 agent, you know, protects the Royal family, Buckingham Palace, the big hats, super stoic. That's this guy. Um, and he tells my dad, my dad was supposed to go out there for a trip. Uh, with my mom and he tells him he's like hey just make sure you bring like i want to take you out or we're, we're gonna go out for like a nice meal so bring like you know at least like one one really nice outfit for one night mm-hmm. dad's like okay um but he ended up getting busy at work there was stuff to do and he ended up having to cancel the trip later on he finds out his friend and my six agent tells him he's like yeah he's like you missed out he's like i couldn't tell you for security reasons but we were gonna have dinner with the royal family what? Yeah, my oh dad my was going to have dinner with, because of the work that he did, he like had like a security, like clearance pass, whatever. And so him and my mom were going to dine with the queen, Prince William, Prince Harry, pr- freaking all those people. I don't keep up with the royal family at all. That's so I don't so know really cool though, just to say you dined with royalty. Like literally he was going to have dinner. And that's like my dad said, he's like, that's my, probably if I had one regret in life, it would be canceling that trip. And you know, his friend couldn't tell him, you know, for security reasons, yeah. reasons obviously. Otherwise my dad wouldn't have canceled the trip. But yeah, my dad was going to dine with the queen. Oh my but gosh. Even the story of almost doing it is still pretty cool. Yeah, but it'd be way say. cooler if he did. Well, yeah, obviously. But dang. What are you going to do? That's why sometimes, you know, a little lesson out there sometimes, though, sometimes with work, if it takes too much of your time, don't cancel too many fun things. Um, I've never done a, a poor British accent. I've never talked. <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't do any accents with Nicole, I've, though. I've never, I've never <laughs> said. Anything bad. Should we move on? I feel like I'm incriminating myself. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not embarrassed anymore. You shouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I think it's, they think it's great. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how to start the show now. (laughs) Should have just started with that. Yeah. I, um, hello, everyone. Uh, my <laughs> guest today needs no introduction, for it is none other than Nicole 
Miriam Eniety? Yeah, that's my name. It's actually Nicole. Uh, it's just Nicole. Yeah, it's Nicole Miriam Eniety. Yeah, that's what it says on my on my marriage license, which is invalid. I remember Wait, why Nicole's is it invalid? middle name. Yeah, why is my it invalid? My marriage license is invalid because my rabbi put the date where the signature goes and the signature where the date goes. So I'm single and ready to mingle. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Let me get David on the horn. Let's no, no, see no. if we can clear this up. <laughs> no. Call him, call him. It's okay. He's not picking up. Oh, that's okay. Well, he'll maybe call he'll you back. call me back He'll later. call you back. Um, well, I'm sorry that you're not married. Uh, that's okay. Uncongratulations. <laughs> no, I'm very um, married. I'm in a very committed I was at your wedding and I feel cheated now. Oh, yeah. Um, that was fun. You were having a bl- You guys were all having a blast. Yeah, it was it. a great time. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I before we started recording... I was looking through the little list of things that. Oh, oh, it's David! Here it is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, hey, David. Got you. Um, got you on the podcast right now. I'm currently chatting with your not wife. <laughs> um, because your marriage license is invalid. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I guess our both our witness and our rabbi. Oh yeah, the witness also. Signed screwed up. the wrong place. On our marriage yeah. certificate, and the state said, "Hey, we can't accept this." Hmm. So, it's okay, baby. I still love you. No piece of paper can change that. <laughs> we've been living in sin ever since. Wow. <laughs> well, you heard That's it here us. first, folks. <laughs> Nicole is on the market. She is not married. Um, I've got her <laughs> her not husband on the line here, confirming it with He's us my right lover. now. Uh, would you like to say anything to your not wife? Hi, babe. I think she's worth a lot. If, if she's gonna go. Are you auctioning me off? God. <laughs> Persian girl problems. That's right, babe. I love you. Thank you for your David support. David said, might as well get a bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the entire farm for my hand. Yes. All right. Yes, yes. I love you. Bye, Bye honey. Um, well, that's, huh. a, that's a tough way to start the show, I got to no, say. No, I think it's great. He's yeah. trying to get us like a few acres. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Because he's a part of... He's a part of the package. Like, he comes with. Wait, he comes with the package. I mean, he's got to come. I mean, like, he's my man. He's got to come with. So what would he, what would his role be? Say another man were to give you a farm, maybe some some animals. Groundskeeper. And, and marry you. <laughs> Groundskeeper. Yes. Would you have a steamy affair with him? Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I just tell, I just tell like, my husband, then I'd be like, oh, I'd, like, pat him on the hand and be like, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> and then he'll fall asleep and then I'll go make love to the groundskeeper. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> what a what, what a, a true love start. story! Yeah. What yep. a true love story. Anyway, you did a rap music video. I did when you worked at Lush. I did uh, that. I just watched before we started recording. It's embarrassing. It's hilarious. It's a cover of Gucci Gucci by Crayshawn. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that the video came out in 2011. Um, <laughs> Jamie, you're gonna leave a link to that, right? Yeah. Or you'll post be, a clip. Yeah, it'll okay. be it'll be included in the live video. Good. It's fine. You know, we all have skeletons in our closet. <laughs> That's mine. It's a soap. I'm sorry. It's a dental related Gucci Gucci cover. I mean, you're encouraging people to brush their teeth, to have good dental hygiene, Important. all while packing it in a nice, beautifully written song. Thank you. Yeah, and Lush I is cool. It. I used to go to Lush all the time. Yeah, I spent a lot of money at Lush. The Lush employees are so nice. They are so sweet. I a went in there one pushy. time. They're a little pushy. Yeah, but they're like pushy in a good way. Like I went in there yeah. one time to shop for gifts. I think it was like Christmas or something. And I was like, oh, I'll get like my sister some stuff. And and then I was like, she was like, oh, what are you shopping for? Because I was in there alone, mm-hmm. and she was really nice. She helped me pick out some stuff, and then she gave me like a bunch of free gifts too. That's good. Some nice bath bombs, some soaps, they a lip us. scrub. Yeah, they taught us to be pushy. They were like, don't take no for an answer. Revisit. Come back to them. Offer them a free hand massage. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a interesting, I love the interesting uh, method of making people buy soaps. I love their stuff. I still use a lot of their stuff to this day. Do you um do you employ any of the things that you learned at Lush in your day to day now? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of pushy, you know. I, I really don't. Uh, you know me. You, you know, I don't really take I don't take no for an answer a lot of the time. I I try to you know cajole the person to give cajole. me a little bit more. You know, it's a good word. Yeah, no convincing, only cajoling. <laughs> only cajoling. <laughs> Next time David comes to you with an absurd request, Nicole's like. Time to put the lush tactics to work. Yeah, I I mean it did teach me to be uh, like a little like charming. I think I think that's one thing I learned from from working at Lush was being 
charming and approachable. So I do yeah. definitely use that in my everyday. No, I get that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like any retail job that's that true. you get. Yeah. I, I sure. mean, you go to you go to a store, and if someone's being a ding dong mean meanie face, yeah. I'm trying this new thing out, Jamie, where I don't swear. If someone's being <laughs> okay, a ding dong sure. meanie face. <laughs> you don't want to buy stuff from them. You don't want to give them your business. It just leaves a sour taste. Why do you think I keep going back to Lush? Yeah, because they're, they're nice. so dang nice. But let me tell you, I've had some jerks at some at some places, no. and I keep going back. We'll call them out. Uh, I can't. Where? Okay. So I went to this place called Agence Provocateur, which is a lingerie store, to buy lingerie for someone. And um, mm. they refused to give me an ice box. And I huh. said, give me the box. And they were like, no. Yeah. And I'm like, give me the box. Yeah. And then they ended up giving it to me. But I was like, I didn't need all that. Just give it yeah. to me from the beginning. Why wouldn't they give you the box? I don't know. They were being jerks. It's funny. I... Maybe I didn't spend $500. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, you know, you should just always be nice because you never know yeah. how much yeah. money someone wants to spend. This literally happened this past weekend. I was in Denver uh, with my family mm -hmm. and we went to a really nice steakhouse, got dinner and stuff, but we were meeting up with my sister afterward to get drinks. Uh -huh. But the only place that like didn't have a wait and it was like close to us was Ruth's Chris. Oh, nice. And so we're like, we're just going to go to Ruth's Chris, get yeah. some drinks. Well, one, we walk in. And we're all just like, my dad is very wealthy, but he does not dress like it. Like he's definitely <laughs> the guy that just like will walk around in like shorts and flip flops sure. no matter what. Um, so we go in and already the hostess is being standoffish. Like, oh, like, all right, go find a table in the bar area. And there's literally a sign on the like stand that says like, business casual attire required. Sure. Please take off your ball caps before entering the bay dining group. And I only wear hats, so I was wearing a hat. But we go in, and this guy comes over to us like a server, and he asks us what we're doing. And we're like, oh, we just want, you know, some drinks. And and so my daddy asked for, like, a spirits list. And the guy's like, oh, we don't have one. He's like, what do you want? And then my dad just looked at me. He's like, you know, something old. And the guy's like, well, I'm old. Like, And he was just, like, being very weird. What? And so, Strange. And then he, like, walks away. My dad, like, has to stand up and walk over to, like, look at what bottles they have at the bar. That's so weird. And my dad was like, literally, if he told me, he could have told me any spirit. Like, he's like, I don't care if it would have been like a $300 pour. If he just said something and like sold it to me, I would have bought it. Yeah. I would have bought it multiple times. Like, if he'd, you know, suggested Macallan 25, he's I like, I would have, he's like, I would have gotten that right away. Sure. Um, He's like, but he didn't. He was being a he was being a ding dong McGoober face. Sounds like he was being a ding dong. Yeah. Come on, Ruth's Chris. And so my dad Step ended up, up enjoying an Oban 14 instead. Which is still a great whiskey, still a great scotch, but the guy got a l far less of a tip. There you go. I yeah, I just feel like, why wouldn't you just be like, hey, let me give you a selection, or at least walk with him That's over there. Odd. Or rattle some off. It was weird, but you know, it's a Ruth's Chris. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't like, the, Jamie, I'm reading, I'm you know skimming through this page here. I don't like that you dropped a link to Nicole's wiki feed. I have a wiki In the feed. Dock. <laughs> I have a 4.5 rating. Pretty good. Wait, you have a 4.5? What's mine? I have mine? nice feet. I have always had nice feet. I didn't know wiki feet was, some, was a thing. And then I was like, oh, this is like interesting. Is wiki feet blocked on our it network? It should be. I, I hope it is. Yeah, I think that's considered poor. Dang it. Yeah, yeah it's blocked. It's, just, a body it's part. just feet. I can't check. Yeah, it's just feet. I can't check my score, but I think I'm like I'm in the somewhere like four point high. That's it's good. It's like above a four point six. As I think, you should. 5, yeah, so. nice feet. You also taught me the art of wearing Crocs to work. Yeah, Crocs that? are fire. Yeah. Okay, they're great. If you have a job Ooh, that you stand Crocs. um a lot, yeah, get a pair of Crocs. Very comfortable. Okay, we've effectively wasted fifteen minutes talking about nonsense. Now. What do you mean nonsense? Is there any? What do you mean? No, it's time to get into the nitty gritty. Okay, Nicole. let's get knit and grit. I was trying to pick the funniest thing to read off of the page after I said, let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Lactose. Okay. Thoughts on vegan cheeses or just using lactate? You already know the answer. Yeah, I do. I have like 50. I bought the mega pack of lactate from Costco.com <laughs> because I love cheese. And I'm not going to sacrifice the good things in life because I got a few tummy gurgles, okay? I'm just going to eat two pe two little lactose enzymes and I'm going to have a slice of Colby yeah. Jack because that's all I care about, man. Yeah. Vegan cheese, F that S. F that S, yeah. indeed. Oh, liquor story. Oh, yeah? Because you mentioned Costco. Yeah, yeah. I So I grew up in Idaho where it's like state-run liquor stores only. Really? You can't, like in Idaho, you can't go to a grocery store and buy liquor. You can only go to a liquor store that's run by the <gasps> state. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But apparently Costco has great deals on liquor. 
that I didn't know about because mm-hmm. like I've been to Costco here like a, a couple times. Oh yeah. But I don't go often. But yeah, we're in Denver with my parents and my dad's like, oh, we got to go to a Costco. And I was like, why? He's like, so I can get some Don Julio 1942. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently they just have the gigantic like 1.2 liter mm-hmm. bottles mm-hmm. for they're like way cheaper than they are in Boise. So my dad just got like $1,800 worth of 1942. Costco for parties? That's where you oh, go to get yeah. bulk alcohol. See, There's yeah, but... no other way to do it. But yeah, at least you know now. At least I know now. I don't like going to Costco, though. <gasps> it's so stressful. I get so anxious going to Costco. No way. It feels like such an ordeal because I got to go. I got to navigate that awful <laughs> parking lot. Okay. I got to find a place to park. Then I have to walk through the masses. And then everything is so big. There's so much space and there's so many people. I, love I don't know. It. it freaks me out. I like the pizzas and like the hot pizzas? dogs. I don't mind going. I love going with my mom. I go to Costco with my mom. Yeah. That's the best it's thing ever. It's a place ever. to go with your parents. But yeah, going I get by it. myself, that sucks. But now whenever you have your big blowout shindig birthday party. I don't. Whenever you're my, having it. My birthday was a f- I know, but like next year. Ago. No, next year, next year. I don't. Now you know where to get all the alcohol and all the little snack packs. Yeah. I'm not a big birthday party person. Okay, well, you're going to have one next year. I've already decided. W- why? I want, it, I want you to have a fun birthday. Are fun you going to throw it for me? Where? I don't know. Mythical parking lot. <laughs> I think there's a there's a <laughs> the Chuck E. Cheese parking nearby. Lot parties get down a little bit. <laughs> what if a what lot if of it? We yeah. just got a huge bottle of liquor, did shots, and then went to the Chuck E. Cheese. Oh no! I Hell to... yeah! That'd One be time, epic. Last time I went to Chuck E. Cheese, I uh I had a well. Let me explain this. I was going through the tunnels, and then my knee felt something wet, and I put my knee in a puddle of pee. <laughs> Oh no! And then everyone back. <laughs> in like the jungle gym, like kids, like tubes. the tube, the tube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I put my knee in a puddle of pee, <laughs> and never gone back because I have bad memories associated with that place. My <laughs> knee was covered oh, in pee. That story is true. Like I was pee? the one who peed. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. So my uh, knee got pee on it, and then everyone back. But I would go back for your twenty-second birthday. Good try. 24th would be next year. <laughs> no, no. I just old turned 23. <laughs> it's not important to me how old you are. It's important to me how you feel. I don't know. I feel like I should feel older. Uh huh. Like, I feel like I have a lot of responsibilities that 23 year olds might not have. I don't know. Sure. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. Which sucks. A lot of responsibilities. I wish I had less responsibilities. Yeah. I have to like clean so much of my house and I hate it. Ugh. You have to clean your house. Ugh. See, I don't. <laughs> I, occasionally, every once in a while, Ugh, I'll do a little s- spot clean. So many dishes at home. I because I make dinner every night, every single night. I make dinner except when I go out to eat, or if I go to my in laws' house, or if I'm invited somewhere. But um, you know, it's a lot of home cooking, and I love it, and I love doing it. But it's like, damn, like the dishes really pile up, yeah. man, and I don't want to do them. You already know I don't eat, so I don't. Yeah, have dishes that's, to that do. makes it easy. That makes it very easy. You just... I physically cannot cook at home. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I I genuinely I think okay. So I've lived in my apartment now for like almost three years, probably yeah. like two and a half years. Uh huh. I think I could count on both hands wow. the number of like actual meals I've cooked wow. that wasn't just like. Making a sandwich related. or just like, like, you know, making a ham and cheese sandwich, like yeah. where I've actually had like cooking to it. do. So you cook a lot at home. I do. You cook a lot at work. Yeah, I do. Um, how do you feel that your relationship with food is? Bad. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> bad. Negative and bad. I, I mean, mean, you're always cooking. So like, how do you, how do you separate cooking at work from like cooking at home like what is your mindset different when yes, you do either of course yeah. when i cook at work it is it is to make sure that it's perfect it's to make sure that it's it's camera ready it's yeah. to make sure everything is kosher yeah. and like not like kosher but like make sure everything is like good to go and ready for for camera yeah and that's my mindset um when i'm at home i'm cooking for leisure i'm cooking for pleasure yeah um i'm cooking healthier at home too oh yeah so like we (laughs) we eat a lot of we eat a lot of like uh like crappy stuff here because food for camera has got to be cheesy it's got to be fatty it's got to be crazy it's got to be ostentatious it's got to have hot cheetos on it all that stuff at home we try to be a little more conservative like you know maybe we have like a tuna melt we have a nice salad a salad you say yeah tuna melt salads like tonight, I'm gonna make some. I'm gonna do roasted potatoes with okay. a Caesar salad and some roasted salmon. That sounds really nice. Yeah, come over for dinner. <laughs> I have I have enough salmon. I have enough salmon. I have a gym 
to go to. Oh, me too. <laughs> go to the gym. Um, I think that's why I can't cook at home is because I can't mentally separate the two. Yeah, like, it's when a good I, thing. When I cook at work, it is like I want it to be perfect. I want it to look amazing for mm-hmm. camera. Like mm-hmm. I'm, and then when I get home, if I cook, I get really stressed out and really? anxious because it's like I I don't know why. It's just really hard for me, even like grocery shopping. Like really? When I go into it, when I walk into a grocery store by myself, I just get anxious. Really, I think mm. it's therapeutic whenever I go through a grocery store and I'm like, hmm, I'm thinking about the recipes I want to make at home. I'm like, my house definitely needs uh, like corn tortillas. My yeah. house definitely needs some stew meat because I'm going to make Shabbat dinner. So yeah. there's there's things that I, I don't consider it anxiety inducing for me. It's actually yeah. quite pleasurable. But I've been able to throughout the years, I've been cooking since I was 19. So throughout the years, I've I've learned there is stress cooking. Yeah. And we experience that. And mm-hmm. then there's pleasure cooking because it's cooking for yourself. It's cooking for a loved one. It's yeah. cooking for X, Y, and Z. And those those expectations don't matter. Yeah. Whoever yeah. eats my food is going to like it. And if they don't like it, I don't care. Yeah. If my food that I'm making for the show isn't good, that's my job on the line. Yeah. And that's And I understand that mentality. But it never seeps into my personal. Interesting. Because yeah. there's no, who am I there to impress? I don't know. I think that's my problem. Like, I, I used to cook for pleasure. Yeah. And then it, cooking became my job. And now every, all cooking I do is, like, stress-inducing. You shouldn't do that. I mean, I mean. Oh, I mean, trust me. I wish I did. I, know. <laughs> I, just, I just think, I think, I think the worst thing you can have in a lot of things is expectations. Yeah. Like, having expectations at work is, like, fuel. Like, that's yeah. good. I like, I like that kind of. Uh, challenge for myself yeah. and for my team. I think it's valuable. Yeah. But when you go home, it's not supposed to be challenging. It's not supposed to be a stress ball. It's not supposed to be, what are they going to say about my tacos? I don't care. I'm making you tacos. Mm. Eat them. They're going to be dank. And if you don't like it, there's a Taco Bell a quarter mile away and you can go eat that if you don't like my home cooked food. So like, I don't really care. See, I can't do that. I care you too will. much about what other people think of me. No, no, <laughs> I care I don't. too much about what other people think of me. I mean, there, there is. I, I enjoy cooking at home, and actually, like, I really love cooking for other yeah. people. Yeah. Um, like if I know that I'm going to be cooking, like, especially if it's something special, like yeah. for someone, um, and I get to go like to the grocery store and pick out the ingredients and kind of sure. build like a recipe, like while like starting at the grocery store yeah. is fun, but. I don't know. It just, it does stress me out. Like, I don't know. When I cook, I, I'm not hungry afterward. I used to be like that too. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think a lot of these things happen with uh, time and, and like age. I feel like therapy. The, oh, big, big fan of therapy. But I do think, I think, <laughs> I think doing time and like, and like actually like putting effort towards it. Here's a good example. I used to have a phobia of eating by myself. Hmm. Literally soul consuming i couldn't do it i was scared what people would say about me eating food by myself like out in public yeah out in public Mm, i hated it like i couldn't do it i was like i can't do this my life like what are they gonna think about me what are they gonna say they're gonna say oh my god why is she eating this by herself like is she a loser is she by herself and like i you know what i did i went to the farmer's market at the grove okay i sat down I got Brazilian barbecue. I sat at a that big place table. Is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sat at a big table just like this. I sat by myself. I ate my meal, and I was never scared to eat by myself ever again. Got to face it head on, man. You That's just gotta... a good place to do it. Too. Yeah. That place is busy. Yeah, and you know nobody in in reality nobody cares about you. No, we are nobody this big. Does. We are an ant in the world, and the world is in a universe, and the world is just one big organism. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the amount of times that I've been walking out in public or at a restaurant or wherever, and I've, like, looked at someone who is eating alone and started, like, judging them or thinking about them, zero. Zero, literally. <laughs> zero. zero. But the zero. amount of times that I'll be out in public and doing something by myself, and I'm like, every single person here is looking at me and judging me right now. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> I used to be like that, too. And then just got to face it head on and actually do it. And then your fears kind of just dissipate. Can I just get over it? What if you don't get over it? Then you got to go to therapy. What then you got to go to a licensed professional. You can't get it, schedule an appointment with a licensed professional because of your pre-existing mental health conditions that prevent you from reaching out. Follow BetterHelp. BetterHelp <laughs> helps consumers like me and you to find no. therapy. I don't know. I actually don't know anything about any of these, like, uh, I guess, four higher apps. 
for therapy. But I don't know. You just got to you just got to find your way. Whatever no, that I, way is. I actually that's a joke. I scheduled an appointment. <laughs> I love that. I recently had therapy and I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I recently had one therapy appointment. I graduated from therapy and it was great. My my relationship with food is not good, but it's going to get better. And I believe that for me, for you, for anybody who has food problems. That's uh, hard. And like, and like eating problems. And I feel like, like food problems are so, they're so difficult to um, identify in yourself. Oh my gosh, so true. Yeah. Like mm. I didn't realize, I, it took me a long time of having a really toxic relationship with food to mm -hmm. finally look at like my habits and what I was doing and being like, wait, this is literally just an eating disorder. Exactly. Like yeah. for me to, for me to realize it had been going on for ages <laughs> that I finally, and then I was like, wait a minute, this isn't just like, cause I would talk about it and I would like say things like, oh yeah, I don't really eat that much. Like I don't, you know, I don't yeah. eat super often. I don't get hungry super often. And then like, I started to realize more and more, wait, no, this is like actually just an eating disorder that I have. And yeah. Has gone unchecked. For I know. A long time. I feel like uh, we both have. I don't know if it's eating disorders. I think we both have disordered eating. Yeah. And finding out what that what that is is the first step. So. For me, when I realized it was when I was at the doctor. Oh yeah. And it was they weighed me, and I I don't <sighs> weigh myself. I don't have a scale at home. Oh really? I don't weigh myself, but like you know when I go to the doctor, or whatever, like they'll weigh. So I like you know know generally what my sure, weight is. Sure, sure, sure. But it was after I had COVID. Um, I like went in for a general checkup and they weighed me and I'd lost like 10 or so pounds. Mm. And the first thought that went through my head was like, oh, I could probably like eat a little bit more now. Nice. And then I was like, wait, <laughs> that's not healthy. Cause if the whole reason that I wasn't eating a lot was so that I wouldn't gain weight. And now that I've lost weight, I feel like I can maybe, you know, cheat a little bit yeah. and eat more. That's probably not healthy. Yeah, but I agree. What are you gonna do? You know, the, nothing. It There's happens. nothing. You, you could just gotta just gotta take care of it, however you see fit. I don't. I don't see fit anyway. Can you be friends with your boss? Oh, I don't know. I'm friends with Josh, but like whenever he like tells me what to do, it kind of like. It is weird. It's weird. I think as it's funny. I think as time goes on and our team grows, it gets it gets like more. It's like. The lines weirder every new person we hire. Yeah. Because when it was just you and Josh, I'm sure it was just like, you know, you know, you and you and Josh versus the world. It was yeah. you two doing everything. Sure. And then you hired me and then it was like, okay, now there's like a little bit more structure. Yeah. And then we hired V and then it's like, okay, now we're really defining roles. And then we hired Lily and now it's like, okay, we have like a team now. Sure. It's not, and it's nothing's as hectic. So there's not those those bonding moments of like insanity where yeah. we're in the kitchen to like 9 p.m. and That's we just true. like have to finish something and figure it out and we're all just losing our minds together. Yeah, those are those were really fun times. Uh, I think the good news is we can have those times outside of the office. I know. Which is which is a blessing. No, and I'm I so like that. thankful that we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I do think, I think you can be friends with your boss. I just think, I think it's one of those situations where it's like, when they tell you what to do, how do you respond? Yeah. And do you respond appropriately or do yeah. you respond like a homie? And I think that's one of the things I still learn every day. Yeah. Like I like whenever someone tells me what to do, like I need to understand that, that they're they're an authority figure and what they're saying is to benefit the yeah. team. It's not to hurt my feelings. It's not yeah. to to downplay anything I do. No, no, yeah. It's just it's just for the betterment of the team and to make things go smoother. So I've learned that the older I've gotten and the more that I've worked. Yeah. But I think everyone can be friends with everyone. Yeah. And I think I think you you figure it out the more time you spend working with someone. Yeah. Like obviously there is a difference between you like like us being in the kitchen, you being like, Trevor, can you chop an onion for me? Sure. And I just go, Yes, sir. Yeah, and just yeah. like start dabbing or whatever, yeah. or like do something silly. But then I do it versus yeah. you like saying, like, here's something that you need to work on and fix. Like if if you said that to me and I was like, oh, yes, sir, yeah, like yeah, started yeah. acting like an idiot, like yeah, that yeah, wouldn't yeah. be appropriate. Yeah, so, so that's we good. spend enough time together. I think yeah. I, I think I know when you're being serial, when you're being serial and Super when you're serial. being a silly, goofy gal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Rhett and I are friends. Yeah. Yeah. Rhett and I are pretty tight. Yeah. Should I FaceTime him? No. no. <laughs> you think I, I you said no, like you believed I had Rhett's phone number. <laughs> I don't know. Anything's possible. I think I, have, I don't. I, I don't think I have, have some people's phone numbers. I was going to ask you a question, but it's a game that Jamie wrote down that I don't have access to. Oh, it's, yes. It's F Mary. 
It's Coitus Mary Kill Food Edition. Oh, yeah. But this is a good game. It good says game. on a different sheet, so there's no looking ahead of time, so that I'm surprised as well. So oh, yes. we're going to play it no now? No cheating. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes, I like this. C-M-K? Yes. Coitus. Coitus Mary Kill. Coitus Mary Kill. What a good word, by the I way. Love- Coitus. <laughs> I do, too. Trust me. <laughs> okay. So round one is Taco Bell menu items. <gasps> okay. So we have the Crunchwrap Supreme. Okay. We have the Cheesy Gordita Crunch. And then we have the Doritos Locos Taco. Mm. Which Should I tell you? Okay. Do you want to go first? Or do you yeah. want me to Nicole, go first? Nicole, you can go first. You go first. I can go you first. Go first. Okay. I'm going to have intimate coitus with uh, the Crunchwrap Supreme. I'm going to marry the, the Cheesy Gordita Crunch and then the Doritos Locos Taco. Murder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Murder. I'm very different. I am, I am coitusing the Doritos Locos Taco. Um, Interesting. Because, you know, that's just a fun, fiery romp. And then I'm killing the cheesy gordita crunch. <gasps> and I am and marrying, I am making an honest, honest woman <laughs> of the crunch wrap supreme. You don't like to, I feel like that's my favorite item on the menu. Yeah, no. yeah. Cheesy gordita, gordita crunch if, is the best menu if, item on Taco Bell. If you pick, no. No, like if I'm quesarito. Going there, if the quesarito okay. was the oh, only yeah, yeah. item left on the Taco Bell menu, I would have no problem. I need to That's eat a good one. one. Of those. I need to get one. You know one. that like some Taco Bell locations, I went to one, they're like, oh, you can only get that if you order it online. I was like, what? So does- dumb. I was what like, so you- yeah, made? I was like, I'm here. What? Yeah, I was what like, what do you mean? <laughs> so dumb. I think so they dumb. just were being mean to me. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a Shady. huge cheesy gordita crunch person. <gasps> I'm not. I, and so I, I understand. I could eat one now. I'm different. I don't care. All right, yeah. next time. I know that there's no points to this, but I would have given a point to Nicole because I agree. Okay. Okay, Nicole has an arbitrary <laughs> One zero. point. Yeah. One zero. Let's go. All right, round two is um, sandwiches. Okay. Okay. So we have the Cuban sandwich. Okay. Mm-hmm. The French dip and a tuna melt. Oh. Uh, oh. Should I go first? No, I'm going first. Okay, this you time. go first. Go first. I am effing the, the S out of the French dip. Okay. Okay. I am making an honest woman of the Cuban sandwich, mm-hmm. and I am killing a tuna melt, murdering it in cold blood with no remorse. I am right. going to marry a tuna melt. I'm going to have sexual relations with a French dip, <laughs> and then a Cuban murder. <laughs> killing my wife. Yeah, let me tell you, I know. You're let me tell you something my about you. Wife. Let me tell you something. I know that you love Cuban sandwiches because you always order them from car- carving board and I know that about you and I'm sorry. They don't have a Cuban but sandwich. They have a... M- media noche. Yeah. But whatever. Muscles, menos, same thing. Not um, same thing. It's very similar. Um, but I can't... Like, let me tell you. So I don't mind pork products. I eat them all the time. But uh, in my house... You gotta keep it tuna melt. Also, Philippe's is probably my favorite restaurant in LA. I take mm. I take everyone I can to Philippe's. So you're murdering the Cuban sandwich on a religious basis. Okay. For on Murder a in the basis. name of God. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that, you know? We love that here. <laughs> love it. Okay. Um on that one, I think that one's tough. Of who the imaginary point would go to? Yeah, it's not imaginary; it's this real now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's okay, Jamie, give the point. Jamie, I'm give gonna it. have it's to subjective. give it to Trevor because yes, I fine. love. Never mind. Sandwiches. The points aren't That's stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. one one, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like <laughs> whose line is it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> although, although I feel like I would actually keep the tuna melt and nix the French dip personally. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, the French dip. That's just. That's just good. That's just. A, that's just good. That's a good fun night. It is, but I just a sloppy night. What do I eat more? I eat I eat a tuna melt more than a French dip. Any sandwich you can make a noise while you're eating that's a big I'm deal i the valid. crap out yeah. of that it's a big deal <laughs> see I want that sloppy every day <laughs> in my married life okay okay round three final round tiebreaker round okay desserts <gasps> oh is this not a good one no this is, no, this one. is, this is very one. good okay. it's just okay. I have strong opinions yeah yeah okay so we're going creme brulee a molten fudge brownie and an ice cream sundae oh now the ice cream sundae my favorite flavors of ice cream, or is it a Neapolitan sundae? Um, you can choose your favorite flavors. <gasps> okay, that's oh. good. Um, it was okay. I'm okay, going- but wait, wait, wait. For, so we're talking sundae. You can choose any flavors, but you have to have the classic sundae toppings. We're talking banana, chocolate syrup. That's a banana like, split when it has banana. Yeah. Oh, oh so okay. So what's a sundae? Then? Ice Just cream, chocolate syrup. Ice cream, chocolate. Ice cream, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, nuts, and a maraschino cherry. Yeah. Sprinkles. Sure. Okay. All right. Continue. Do you want to go first? Yeah. 
I'm going to kill the creme brulee. What? I'm killing it. Done. Bye. What? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to. <laughs> can I say that? Yeah. You yeah. Can say I'm that. going to the brownie because I've been really craving a brownie and I haven't had it in like years, but I'm really craving like a good, yummy, hot, fudgy brownie. Okay. Can I be honest? What? I ordered Domino's pizza last night. The cookie brownie. How from good Domino's is it? Is so good. It's like, Domino's has stepped their game up. It's dude, so good, and they're it's literally like fine dining. They're just taking like brownie batter, and they're just like scooping like cookie dough into it and That's putting fine. it in the oven, and it is immaculate. They can Continue, do whatever though. they want. Continue. It is like that. That dish is like fine dining. Like Wolfgang Puck can't do that. No, <laughs> but Domino's can, and they do it well. Um, what was I saying? So I killed the creme brulee. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm. The molten chocolate. Yeah. And I'm going to marry the Sunday because I got to choose my partner. And that is the most special no. thing of all. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? No, I think, I mean, I think. Okay, you have your own opinions. Have I them. am coitusing the crap. I do agree with you on the brownie, <coughs> the molten fudge brownie. Yeah, I'm yeah. coitusing the crap out of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm killing the Sunday and I am marrying the. Creme brulee. Creme brulee is classy, man. Creme I understand why you want to make an honest person out of the creme brulee. Yeah. Honestly, cl- you want to marry someone classy, someone of a high yeah. caliber. Here's my problem with the Sunday is I am not a huge ice cream person. Mm, like, I'm not the kind okay. of guy that can open up a pint of ice cream and just finish it. <gasps> Me oh. either. I can't do that. Me either. Me like, either. I'm a, I'm a take a few bites guy. Like, if I get a pint, even if I like get it from the Cold Stone or something, like my favorite flavor. I get it out. I have a few bites. I'm like, okay, I'm the that's same enough. And then I put it away and it lasts me a long time. I'm the same I just way. don't have that kind of deep connection to ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream. I love ice cream. I think it's really good. But I do like, what What would you say? What's flavors? Like your top three flavors? Uh, Chocolate chip cookie dough, mint, chip. And then I would maybe do, I don't know, I'd, I'd do something crazy like like strawberry cheese. I was gonna say, oh, that one's so good. Or or maybe a a, a strawberry <laughs> just for a little fruit. crazy. Or maybe yeah. like I don't know, <laughs> like some, a so, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, something like that. So who wins? So final point <clears throat> goes to Nicole. Split decision. Because, Come okay, on, Trevor. <laughs> Sorry, it was but... really nice uh, being here. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> shake my hand. Shake my hand. Shake my hand. Be an honest man. Thank you so much. Thank you. I you just, are such a graceful loser. You can't loser. throw on an ice cream sundae in my book. Yes, you, but you I can still always, love Trevor. You can it's always okay. f- a brownie. I do love Trevor. Jamie, do we want to do the the Twitter? I I ask people on Twitter. I feel like we got to go through some of them. Okay, yeah. let's go through some yes. of them. So, all right, all right. Tweeple. All right. Do people right, still use right. that word? I got yeah. Here, so hey, I got, You're I such out, a millennial. <laughs> I, I picked out some good ones. So this is you did. Yeah, right. for food for thought. Okay. okay. So this comes from at underscore Harper. All right. Okay, Harper. Okay, Harper. When you invite someone back to your place for some consensual adult hanky panky, what dish do you cook to get their pants off ASAP? That that's tough. Eggs. What dish do you cook? Because it can't be something heavy. If you cook something too heavy and you're like if you like make a nice meal, but it's really like if you make like a really nice pasta and they eat a lot. Yeah. I'm not trying to get down hanky panky in the sheets after a big plate of pasta. That's that's mm. sit down time. That's you know let yeah. it all out time. Mm. That's not hanky panky time. So I think it's got to be something with a protein, you yeah, know, okay. to keep your energy up. It's got to have a vegetable. Um, wow, really? But it's got it can't be too complex. I don't think you know. I think it has to be something like if you if you did a nice like small maybe like a five ounce fillet with some roasted asparagus. I think that's that's prime pickings for a nice night of hanky panky afterward. Now, are you inviting them over for dinner, or are you inviting them over like you met them at the club and you're just trying to feed them before you start to get oh, dirty? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so very there's different. two. Yeah, I feel like you can have two different. Let's meals. have two different answers. Okay, so if you're inviting them over for like a date night at your place, then okay. you're cooking for and them, and you're doing the fillets. Yes, yeah. and that's then nice. and then okay, we were out. We came back to my house. Yeah, and some things were going to ensue, but we needed to get some energy. Okay, got it. Oh. So, so that's that one's tougher. Kind of, yeah, yeah. No, I got that one first. I'm gonna do a chile quiles because oh. I'm. It's so fast to make. All you need are tortilla chips, some jarred salsa, and eggs. And you make that. You put a dollop of sour cream. You put a one cilantro leaf, and they're like ah, and then they want to have sex with you. So I, I think chile quiles is like the perfect like late night mm-hmm. quesadillas, yeah. things like that. You know, I literally was gonna say guacamole. Guac. If you got yeah. some avocados, a little mm-hmm. onion, a little cilantro, yeah. I mean, you can do a yeah. lot with a couple of avocados. Yeah. 
And it's, you know, it's not too heavy. It's not too dense, but, you know, it's got some good fats in it, some good energy. Yeah. And who doesn't love guacamole? Yeah. And guacamole turns me on. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Respectable. I think my fine dining, I think I'm going to go opposite. I'm trying to go heavy. I'm trying to get them to be sleepy. You know, Wait. Oh, I'm thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> you want to take that back a couple no, steps, No, no, not like in a, not like in a, like a, like a gross way. Like I want them to fall asleep. I want them to be like relaxed. <laughs> you know, I just want them to be chilling, like sitting on the couch, okay. button open, like they're full, you know? Cause so that's you're in, trying to do the work. Yeah, 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 sure. Why not? And then, um, I think it would be Oso Buco with a nice polenta, nice creamy, cheesy polenta and a little gremolata. No. Made out of orange, lemon, there, parsley, no. and some olive oil. There's no shot I'm f-ing after El Sabuco. Really? Oh, no I am. No shot. I am. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm going straight to the bed. You don't think a steak would make you sleepy? A five ounce, like, lean filet? No. Oh, maybe. I said a small, like, yeah, with roasted asparagus, maybe a starch. You could throw a starch in there, but I don't think it's necessary. Maybe some, like, nice roasted red potatoes. Oh, that's nice. But- Osobuco? Yeah, we're doing Osobuco. No, no, Ow! no. Osobuco, I'm going to my room. I'm pouring myself a double neat of, of Glenn Levitt, and, I am, <laughs> and I'm going to sleep. She's right, got Harper. some good stuff going on. I think she's got a lot to choose from. Oh, oh, that we gave her. I yes. thought you said she offered. Uh, no, no, no. None all right, of, do you have none these one? people offered. Yes. This so, is fun. This one is for, um, from Lighting Up Love. Okay. What's the best <sighs> anniversary meal that you and your SO can make together? Hand- handmade pasta. Yeah, right? that's a good one. Handmade pasta. It's got to be. And if, you know, if you're experienced enough, I'd say do a filled one. Do yeah. a ravioli or a tortellini or something, um, you know. But if you're new to it, just go just go classic spaghetti or fettuccine. But I feel like there's something about making, like, fresh handmade pasta that's so much fun. Totally. And, and if you're doing that with for, like, an anniversary, I think it's a good time. Because handmade pasta, you don't need to do a lot sauce-wise. Totally. You know, like, the noodles are so good, you just throw some pancetta and cream in a pan let it reduce a little bit get a little thick i mean that's that's a dish right there yeah that's yummy i always wanted to do pie and made pasta yeah it's it's fun fun. one time uh we made ravioli and we started at seven ended at 10 30 yeah yeah we made wagyu bolognese stuffed ravioli yeah and it's an it's it's an event you know it takes some time and if you're doing like a ravioli it's nice because you don't have to have a pasta roller you can just hand roll it out yeah um get a little rustic with it but yeah, handmade pasta, I think, anniversary. That's a fun one. Great answer. Awesome. Really cool. Okay, we have this next one is from Photographic Mim. Okay. okay. Um, how do you deal with a very picky, unadventurous eater that you're dating? I got this. Break up with them. No. <laughs> wherever you go, wherever you go, make sure the menu has chicken tenders, french fries, and mac and cheese. Just do it. Yeah. I'd say like if you're if you're dating someone that's picky and they might not necessarily like something, I think that you need to make sure that there is definitely something there that they're going to want to eat. Let yeah. them order that. And then just, you know, offer stuff that you order. If there's stuff that you like that they've never tried, you know, offer them a bite. Or if you can yeah. go to a place, it's like a family style place. Mm-hmm. They can get the thing that they like and that they're comfortable with. Yeah. And then you could get other stuff like if you're with a group of people and they can just, you know, maybe have a bite and try stuff. But I don't think you want to be pushy. Yeah, um, I don't like this slander about like picky people. Like it sucks no. that there's picky people in this world. Like it's not the easiest, but like you just have to be respectful of people's preferences. And yeah. you know, if they can't if you take them to a seafood place and they can't eat anything there, what's the point of even going with them? Yeah. Don't invite them. Yeah. Yeah. Go and somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, sometimes it's like a sensory thing. Like yeah. people just can't handle textures in their mouth. But I think that like there's a lot of like cool things that you can do with food even for like like, I have a friend um, that uh, I went out to dinner with and we went to Shabu Shabu. Yeah. And he has, like, some sensory stuff that, like, he Fathers. couldn't do any of, like, the normal soup bases. But I was like, hey, like, I'm sure that they can do, like, they'll do, like, just a soy base for you if you want. Um, and we can, you can order, like, whatever meats or vegetables you're comfortable with, like, that you can eat. And he ended up, like, you know, just, like, they were very accommodating. And he had something that he never tried before and he That's really great. liked it. Um, So I think that there's ways that you can, you know. There's ways around it. Yeah, there's ways around it where you can try something new without like, you know, going too over the top and then maybe ease into stuff. But yeah, just don't be pushy. Don't give, be them, pushy. give them opportunities and chances to, to try new things if they want to. Um, but yeah, everybody's different. Everybody's got different preferences. They don't have to like everything that you like. Yeah, I'm a little pushy though when it comes to like uh, making my, my husband try things mm. because he's just, he's so reserved. 
Mm. that I'm kind of like, you have to at least try this food once. And if you never want to try it again, that's fine. Yeah. We never have to try it again. Just give it an honest yeah. taste and then you never have to try it again. And I respect that. And, you know, now we know like he can't eat muscles. Like he's just yeah. not that kind of guy and he'll never be that guy. And that's fine. We'll never eat muscles together again. Yeah. That's how yeah. my parents were when I was little. It was yeah. always like my parents, like they love all kinds of different food. And it was always like, you and your brother, you just try it, have a bite. If you don't like it, that's totally okay. You don't have to eat it, but at least give it a chance. Give and, it a chance. And we did. And now I eat everything. Compromise, man. That's all it is. That's all relationships are. Compromise. Yeah. And like you don't, I feel like food can become a big source of conflict if there is a lot of no. pushing there. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. Food should be pleasure food and enjoyable. Beautiful. Yeah. Food should be something that you eat before you have sexual relations. <laughs> Wait, can I ask a question? Because this yeah. is one that I think is funny, but mm -hmm. I don't think anybody asked it. What's the best after hanky panky snack? Like ordered though. Like you, you have ordered? hanky panky and you get on like, if you're in a place that has like a lot of like late night restaurants, uh -huh. like Uber Eats, Postmates, uh -huh. what are you ordering after? If, if the hanky panky was good and the date was nice, what are you ordering for an after afterward snack? I have to snack? order it? Yeah. I mean, unless it could be something you have in your house, but it's always I don't know. a handful of nuts. <laughs> like that is lame. I well, I'm kind of a loser. <laughs> um, honestly, maybe cookies. Like, there's this place called Insomnia Cookies that does oh, like stuffed insomnia cookies. Insomnia is so good. So maybe yeah. a little Insomnia Cookie yeah. situation that's would good. be real good. That's good. It's it's got to be something that's gonna put you to sleep. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. sweet. Something sweet. Something rich that's just gonna knock you out cold. Nice little nightcap. Um. Everybody follow Nicole on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Is your handle still N Hendizade? On Twitter it is. On Twitter it is. And on okay. on on Instagram it's Nicole Hendizade. Okay. But your display name is Nicole and I. Correct. You look up Nicole with either of her last names. Yeah. You're gonna I'll find be there. Her socials. Check You'll out a hot me. dog is a sandwich. Yeah. Great, great podcast over yeah, there. Fun. They talk about food. So I don't know. Do you talk about food in different ways than we just did? Oh, of course. Usually. Yeah. Usually, yeah, I don't time. think as much sex is involved. Maybe no. more sex. Who knows? Sometimes we get a little <laughs> sexy, but also not that much. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I'm yeah. glad we were able to do this today. Yeah, man. no problem. Thank you for coming on the show, Nicole. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. Is there anything else you want to plug to the people? Um, Be a good person. That's a good plug. That's my plug. Be good, plug. good. Be good people. The world's a scary place. Be nice to each other. As a counter argument, spread misinformation. <laughs> Propagate unverifiable facts on the internet. No one can stop you. There's no rules. Just lie to people. Well, everyone, I hope you feel educated. I hope you feel informed. Uh, that was Nicole Anaity. Please give your biggest round of applause. Follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Listen to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. Watch Mythical Kitchen. Support Nicole personally um, through Venmo. Actually, I don't know what Nicole's Venmo is. Uh, um, Jamie, how do you think that went? Do you think people got some good, helpful information out of the show today? I think this is probably the most educational episode we've done. No, they definitely did. I mean, I think helping the people out with trying to make some meals was great. I think talking about, uh, you know, just coming to terms with your relationships with food and trying to figure that out and like yeah. at least identifying them because I feel like a lot of people yeah. have... Issues that they don't realize are yeah. really yeah. issues, I guess. No, 100%. It is a hard thing to recognize and like seeing yourself. Um, but it was fun. I think it was, a good, it was a good time. Before we wrap things up, though, Maggie, who is a producer and editor for A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, mm -hmm. has asked me to clarify something. And I'm going to try. Um, no, I am, because this is a silly one. I'm surprised Maggie doesn't know this. Uh, Maggie asked me, what does ratio mean? Um, so for all of you out there that were wondering what ratio means, there's a term on twitter.com. Uh, originally, actually, this is a fun one because it's changed over time, but in the early days of Twitter, a ratio was when a tweet had more replies than likes. So it had to do with replies. Um, so if someone tweeted something and it had like 50 likes and a hundred replies, that would be a ratio. That means it's a bad tweet because nobody's liking it and everybody has something to say about it, usually negative in the reply. So that was the original meaning. Then mm. the gamers got a hold of it and ratio became uh, something, basically when you reply to a tweet and the reply gets more likes than the original. Oh. So if someone tweeted swag and it got 50 likes and then I replied 
you have no swag and that got 100 likes, then I would have ratioed them because my tweet got more likes than theirs. Um, but now it's just something that people say. And they're just like basically to like dunk on someone. Oh, okay. Like, I actually didn't know what it meant either, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's because you're a boomer, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I am. Um, I am 67 years old, actually. Okay, everyone. To be clear, I'm the biggest Psych fan at this company. I love Psych. If you don't know, Psych is a is a line of streetwear that we release. So it's like different from our normal merch. You can go to Psych dot la to check it out um but it's really fun there's some really insanely cool designs that that our our design team has like put together the shirts everything there's something special about like uh, all the shirts and stuff like they uh, a bunch of the shirts change color when you walk outside in the sun so like a different design will show up on the shirt um i'm wearing this sick little bucket hat action that i got on right now didn't even plan it i was just wearing it and then jamie was like you you need to talk about psych and i was like well i will because i love psych uh, we got some new shorts that change, uh, co uh, like the design changes when they get wet. Oh, um, that's dope. It's just really cool clothes. Like, really cool. I love them. I wear it all the time. Um, and I think it's really cool. So you should check it out, psych.la. There's cool stuff there. And I wear it so we can match. Oh, wink. <laughs> and if you do go to psych.la and make a purchase, you can drop in the code TT2M made you look at checkout for 10% off your order. TT2M, so that is the letter T, the letter T, the number two, the letter M, made you look, M-A-D-E-Y-O-U-L-O-O-K, in all caps, TT2M, made you look, for 10% off, from me, as a personal gift, to you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much. <laughs> that was a big thanks. Listen every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcast, check out the video version the following Monday over on YouTube.com. Follow us, all of us. Check out TikTok. Bye. I really like how you're getting into the just aggressive buys at the end. Bye. See you later, sucker. All right, everyone, if you didn't catch Good Mythical Evening live, fear not, do not worry. You can get the GME VOD available to rent from September 10th to September 18th at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, but it is a rental, so you have to watch it before midnight on September 18th or you're going to miss out. Uh, but it'll be available through that whole period. So if you get the rental, you can watch it from September 10th to September 18th at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Go check it out at goodmythicalevening.com.